what concerns do you have? What uh, observations do you have? If you were to synthesize and speak to that generation, I'm, I'm, the two generations here I, I framed, what would you say to them from inside the crucible that, that we are in in this conversation? Well, I would begin by, and perhaps this is not specific to any particular generation, but specific to um, young people in general, my invitation would be to notice that you're surrounded by your ancestors. This includes those who have died, but also those who stand around you now as living human beings who see and embody things that you haven't yet seen and embodied and both honor what these young people are seeing and are embodying but also holding a space beyond what has awakened for them yet and what i find most powerful in group dynamics is when there is an intergenerational uh, um, thing happening in the group. When there, are, I, you know, I've been in I've been in gatherings where you know the oldest person is eighty something and the youngest person is twenty something, and then there's everything in between. And I think it can be easiest for us as very young people to forget what's behind us and around us and holding us and to think that what we're most interested in about is the only thing that's happening. And for me, many people would still consider that I'm young as 46 or 47. I can never quite narrow it, narrow it down to an exact year. But as I get older, I notice more the, the elders. And I'm, I notice a curiosity. What are you doing? How are you holding me? How are you holding the younger ones that I'm also holding? What's happening here? What happens if I don't just look in front of me, but I look around me and behind me, both as the living beings in the space, but also as the gazillions of human beings that have come before us that are informing every gesture every choice, every piece of language that pours out of our mouth to notice that we really are part of something. And that that's, that's what I would invite the youth, not to change their amazingness and their excitement and their creation. And I mean, there's, I feel like the, I want to also speak to the kind of the, what I see in the, the young people today, especially in that 20 to 30 range is they are breaking all kinds of boundaries around what's possible in mm -hmm. related and there's things that i assume are just patently so that they assume are patently like question marked and 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 i love it and i think it's beautiful and it's going to it's it's going to be what we need to forge forward in this wild world and i think that there's something added if they recognize in their embodied experience what's behind them, and what's mm. around them. What a, what shows up for me is a, a lot of gratitude for youth. Um, what I see with my daughter and um, with her generation is a tremendous amount of questioning and a tremendous amount of just not assuming things are so. And that excites me. Um, and I also see this in, in my own daughter, I see this kind of uh, boldness, this, this just boldness that I truly admire. Um, seeing in, you know, in my daughter's case, she's female. So seeing this young woman um, be so bold in so many dimensions of how she lives life and how she expresses. Um, and so for me, that's very heartening. 
to see that kind of forthrightness and that kind of just popping into life in this way. Um, and so that that is a huge piece for me. I, I think the other piece for me is a sense of um, the younger generations. For me, I think the element around feeling alone the loneliness factor that I think, again, is also intergenerational, right? The, um, there are studies that have been done on the, the amount of loneliness that is showing up on this planet. And so for me, it would be a message that, um, that you are not alone, that even though we sense a deep despair and loneliness at times, um, and, and so for me, it would be an invitation to be in, in a, a new kind of relation to the whole cosmology, to the whole, you know, the stars and the trees. I find that so much of that has kind of dissipated in, in the awareness um, because of devices and because we're, you know, all of these other pieces are so foregrounded that everything then recedes and seems so far away. Um, so for me, there's that sense of reactivating our um, our connection with all these dimensions of life, um, coming back to the river and the wetness and the moisture and right the dirt and the soil and like just all of that, um, waking up to a more sensual and by sensual I mean like awakening of our senses, like taking in the sounds of the ocean waves and taking in the, the the wind and and experiencing that. Um, I see little babies at the airport, like less than a year old on an iPad, you know, or on a phone. And I think, oh my goodness, right? They're missing like the exchange of smiles, the exchange mm. of looking deeply into little eyes and feeling caresses and all of that. Um, and so for me, that my my longing and my wish is for um, the younger generations to to sense into life itself and um, and and for all of us, you know my my sense is after I'm working a whole day on a device, i I like I sometimes call it I, I want to I'm two d and I need to pop back into the three d yeah. world, you know, <laughs> like go on a bike ride or you know walk around and um reconnect on that other in that other way well thank you for uh, this uh, rich journey and and even in this uh, closing round uh, Alexander you bring us into the invitation to reintegrate the ancestral dimension and and Veronica you alerting us to the gratitude to the new birthing that that uh, is coming forth and through a uh, younger generation and and I uh, the way I've experienced uh, our conversation today is there are moments where we we get glimpses into the the intergenerational wombing uh, I'm, I'm getting catching the way of, of, of turning every word into a verb uh, in, in inside this togethering that that's emerging now and uh, that, that that is perhaps what this time is about, this liminal time is about us humans rediscovering what does it mean to be a human and uh, awakening not in the ancient Eastern sense, although that's okay too, but more simply awakening to the fullness of life as it is emerging through us and I, I've, I feel that I've been enriched and experienced uh, ex through both of you uh, the, the symphony of this uh, emerging in our conversation. So thank you so very much. Yeah, so thank much you so for this much, beautiful Eva. dialogue. Along with our website at portalsofperception.org, Portals is also available on YouTube and on all podcast platforms, as well as social media. 
You can become an active member and join the conversation in community events. And you can help us get the word out by liking this content and by sharing it with your friends.